بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله continue on our study of the كلمة تفسير كلمة توحيد And so the Sheikh mentions, and even though the statement of La ilaha illallah they they say it and they call by it in the Adhan and proclaim it five times a day, meaning he was referring to the sex <clears throat> that don't know and understand the meaning of Tawheed truly. That they, for example, look at Jamaat at Tabliq. Uh, many from amongst their Jamaat, from the lay persons, we're not talking about the studied Dara Ulum people or others. We're talking about really the lay persons because they bring all the Muslims together, regardless of whether they're on Shirk Kufr, whether they're on Tawheed, whatever, because they're calling to people back to the Salat only. That's the main goal, is to fill the Masajid. And then, from there, move forward as a Jama'ah and rectifying the Ummah. This is, in essence, what they believe and through their six Kalima. So you'll find people, of course, calling the Adhan, praying five times a day, making Hajj and Ibadah, Still, they don't know the meaning of la ilaha illallah, nor do they know its conditions. And the most deviant of them in this aspect are the people of philosophy and theoretical rhetoric. Many ahl kalam as we mentioned prior to this. And that encompasses many, many of the groups and sects which make taqdeem al-aql al-naql. That they give preference to their intellect over the text, meaning not that they totally throw out Quran and Sunnah. That's not what that means. That it refers more to those people who win it if a text does not seem to conform with their intellect, then they either explain it away, ta'wil, and possibly and perhaps ta'wil facet, or they may negate it. And say, no, 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 that can't be from the Sunnah because it contradicts the Quran, is what they believe. Or something similar to that in their various forms of argumentation. These are the misguided people about whom uh, Imam Shafi'i, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, said, My ruling regarding the theological rhetoric is that they should be beaten. With, a palm, with palm leaves and shoes and be paraded amongst the kinfolk and the tribes with it being announced this is the reward of the one who abandons the book in the sunnah and turns to theological rhetoric, kalam. So it's amazing how people say they are Shafi'i in their medheb, but yet they don't want to follow Imam Shafi'i in his aqidah. Or they claim to follow one of those great imams of the sunnah, but yet they negate their foundational understanding of Islam, of, of Tawheed. Wallahu musta'an. And all of the Imams of the Muslims prohibited this false ideology of philosophy, meaning all the Imams of Ahl Sunnah. This ideology is accepted by the deviant sects like the Khawarij, the Rafida, the Mu'tazila, and even the Ashiris, and including them, the Sufis. Thus they were deviated by this ideology, which all the Imams of the Salaf prohibited and declared its people as deviants. So Ahl Kalam and the people of Kalam and the people who praise Kalam, this is a deviation from the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we don't have authority to come up with these new various interpretations that were not from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam nor his Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een, nor the Salaf al-Salih ridwan allahi alayhim ajma'een, that they did not have these type of uh, interpretations. They did not deviate with regards to these concepts, 
but yet they accepted the nusus as they were. The Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam without ta'rif, without ta'til, wala ta'wil, wala tahrif, and the various forms of distorting those divine names and attributes of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and understanding the religion of Allah. And Imam Shafi'i Rahimahullah Ta'ala said that a person is put to trial with everything that Allah has forbidden besides shirk is better than that he looks at kalam, theological uh, rhetoric. So look at this, look at how the Imams of the Sunnah Imams like Imam Shafi'i felt about Kalam. But you, you have people who claim to be Malikiya and Shafi'iya and followers of the Hanabila Madhab and followers of Imam Abu Hanifa who praise Kalam, who study it in their institute. Look at the, the Dar al Ulum, look at their curriculum. I challenge you, look at their curriculum. You can find it on the internet. It's philosophy. They spend a lot of time studying rhetoric and philosophy. And, and you don't have anything really called creed. They don't really study Aqidah. Their Aqidah is based on Kalam. SubhanAllah. Talk about Dalal al Mubin. So that shows us, Sahabat the importance of the Salafi Dawah, the Dawah to Ahl Sunnah, the Madhab of the Salaf and adhering to Tawheed and the concepts of Tawheed and the concepts of Creed and the Da'wah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based on the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Salaf al-Salih meaning the Sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala alayhi wa at the head of them and that that path is ahkam wa aslam that path, that way is more has more fiqh, more understanding, and is safer. It's the safest path. And it's a path which is based in its origin on literalism. That doesn't mean everything, we go everything literal in the text, but that's what we look as the origin. That the asl of looking at the text is that we look at the literal meaning, unless there's other evidence or some, uh, to, to illustrate from us, to illustrate for us that the kalam sh is, is not literal or has uh, another interpretation. And we look to the madhab of the salaf for that. This is how they understood the text. And that differs with ahl kalam. And this is because whoever falls into philosophy and rhetoric then he has fallen into a very uh, going astray. He falls into denying the names and attributes of Allah. Thus you find that they deny the names and attributes of Allah just by using their opinions and their philosophy. How many times have I had discussions with individuals and that all they go back to, you know, that doesn't make sense. Now, really, does that seem, how does that uh, seem uh, in logic? How does that fit with contemporary times? That's all you, all you hear. You say, subhanAllah, where's your hajjah? You know, we're ordered to follow the book of Allah. Tiyullah wa tiya rasul. And we're ordered to be of the mu'mineen. Alif lam mim. Thalik al-kitab al rayb fi hudin al-muttaqeen al-ladina yu'minun bil ghayb. We're ordered to believe in the ghayb and to understand it. In that, in that uh, way. We're not to debate it and not to say, well, you know, the ghayb doesn't fit with my intellectual capacity. How can our deeds be weighed? How can we believe in the qadr? Uh, there's tension here. How can we believe in this and that? And that's all from philosophy. It's all from opinions. It's all from ra. Wallah, Mr. An.